Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another live edition of Ask Huda. I begin as usual by praising the Almighty alone and sending the greatest peace and salutations upon his most beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. My dear viewers, our phone numbers beginning with the area code as they should appear on the bottom of the screen in area code 002 then 0109. 518-5170, alternatively, same area code, then 0100595, uh, let's go again over it, uh, 060025, and finally, another WhatsApp number, area code 001-361-489-1503. Without any further ado, let's take our first caller, Khamis from United Arab Emirates, Assalamu alaikum. Hamis. Welcome to Ask Good. I'm doing great. Alhamdulillah. And you? Alhamdulillah. Ramadan Kareem, Ustad. May Allah bless you and your family. Ramadan Mubarak to all of you. Go ahead. Proceed on with your question, please, Hamis. Ustad, I wanted to ask about Nikah. Is it valid to hold a Nikah without the presence of the, of the group? I mean, if the parents or everybody's consent is is uh, agreed upon, you know, the girl side, the girl side, and everybody, but uh, the guru maybe is not available at the moment. That can the family go ahead and hold any cover without the groom? But the groom have entrusted somebody to uh, represent them, correct? A wakil. Yeah, like yeah, wakil. The father okay. is there. The mother is there. Not the mother. The the wakil must be a male. So if he's representing him and he's given his consent on his behalf, then the marriage is valid. The pillars of marriage, the ijab and qabul, the proposal and the acceptance and the agreement. If it is either presented by the person himself or by his representative who is given the consent of the person to represent him, then the marriage is valid. Obviously with the consent of the guardian of the girl, and the witnesses the shuhud. Assalamu alaikum. Our next caller is Ibrahim from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Ibrahim. Wa alaikum assalam. Welcome to Ask Wood, Akhi. Uh, I would like to ask um, a question. Uh, the first one is I got two questions if it's okay. The first one is uh, is the zakat. You know, um, if a husband and a wife are separated, Mm. And they have kids, and um, the kids are receiving um, benefits, and the husband is living in another area, and the kids they do stay with him every weekend, um, but he does not use their benefits. Does he pay the cart? Well, um, all of that has nothing. Them. All of that has nothing to do with the payment of zakah. Whether he's married or separate, his kids are living with him or without him. The zakah is based on how much you possess as an individual, whether you are a single, a bachelor, married, with kids, how much do you possess? Do you possess the value of 85 gram of gold or the value of 595 gram of silver? Have you been possessing this for one complete lunar year? Yes, then whether you this amount or more, you should pay zakah on that. So whether you have kids or you don't, whether you are in a charge of paying child support or not. What matters is how much in your position currently at the time of the payment of zakah. Got it, Ibrahim? <coughs> yes. <coughs> Excuse me. That's fine. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, the last question is, uh, this one is regarding just, uh, you know, the ear section is, is Ramadan now. Uh, I just wanted to ask, you know, take, uh, removing the earwax, is it permissible while fasting? Could you get that removed? Because nothing is going in, it's coming out. Is that, what that, is that acceptable or is that permissible? Well, you're right, but to some extent, they got to push water with an injection or a water pump uh, with a very high speed in order to remove the wax, then suck it out. So if you can delay this to after iftar, that is more advised. But if the doctor says it's urgent, some cases the wax is really bad, and he assured you that water by no means is going inside, then go ahead, it's permissible. In regular cases, eardrops, it is permissible. 
okay? Then when it comes to the nose, when it comes to the eyes, we say the hukm, if it reaches the throat or you find its taste, that nullifies fasting. In the case of the ear, they use uh, a syringe and they push the water. So make sure that nothing would go inside. If this is the case, it is permissible. Barakallahu feek. Sister Aisha from the USA, welcome to Ask Huda. Assalamu alaikum. Wa My alaykum question is regarding. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My question is regarding the right way to perform with her prayer. As I understand, you can read one, three, five rakahs. If I'm going to pray three rakahs, should I pray one and then say salam and then read two separately? Well, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, made it easy for us where he prayed which in different formats. So in the hadith he says, Salatu layli masna masna. Whenever it comes to offering the prayer at night, it should be done two by two, two units. Then in case that you're worried the Fajr is approaching, outer, pray what even if it is just one rakah. So it is permissible to pray one simple, single rakah by itself. It is also permissible to pray three rakahs all together, but without middle tashahud. And it is also permissible to pray three rakahs, but two units with the shahud and tasneem, then one by itself. All of that is permissible. Sister Aisha from the USA. Sister Fatima from Ireland. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. I hope you're well. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, indeed, I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. And you, Sister Fatima? Alhamdulillah, I'm very well. Um, my question today is about making dua. Mm -hmm. Usually, I like to spend a lot of time making dua during sujood, um, both during the fire and the sunnah salah, uh, even in, during the night and day. Mm -hmm. And usually, I spend a lot of time in sujood, even during the day, because at the moment, I have a lot of time on my hands. So I thought I'd use this opportunity to spend more time in sujood making dua. My problem is that usually I struggle a lot with, you know, a lot of wasfas and a lot of anxiety. So in my mind, it's very difficult to control my thoughts. So I have to put a lot of effort to focus. And uh, because of that, I always doubt what I have done in my prayer. So when I'm making sujood, I like to prolong my second sujood of the rakah rather than the first so that I don't forget which sujood I'm in all the time. Mm. So I want to know, is it okay? Because I always get confused. So I make most, more um, a longer sujood in the second rakah just so I can make more dua. Uh, but is it like some sort of a bidah or is it okay? Do all the pidahs of the prayer have to be equal in length? Or is it okay if my sajda is much longer? Um, and also when I'm making dua, um, how can I make sure that I don't transgress in dua? Because um, for an example, I like to make dua, you know, that Allah allow us to enter Jannah of Firdaus with ease, without any punishment, without any questioning. Um, but then I like to include the whole ummah, but I don't know if this is okay or not, because I, don't, I know that not everyone will be able to enter Jannah without any questioning, but I don't like to exclude anyone from that dua. So I just want to ask about this. All right. Well, in brief, the answer to your first question that making your second sajda a longer because this way you don't get confused and you don't forget you know that this is your second sajda the answer it's permissible and that's not an innovation the second question what is transgression in dua and you asked or you presented a way when you say oh allah admit me to paradise without questioning without punishment and all the ummah this is perfect and this is how the Prophet ﷺ used to invoke Allah the Almighty. Once he asked the Bedouin, how do you pray? How do you make dua? He said, well, I'm not as eloquent as you and Mu'adh, but I only say, oh Allah, take me to Jannah and keep me away from Nar. So the Prophet ﷺ said, well, this is what me and Mu'adh are revolving around. You know, whether you're an eloquent or a simple person asking for Al-Jannah, and keeping uh, uh, distance from Annar and seek a refuge with Allah against uh, hellfire and its torment. This is basically the core of our request and this is all permissible. But to add to that, transgression in the dua is when you become silly. 
like you know some of the tabi'een and the predecessors heard somebody saying oh Allah I, I, I want to enter paradise I ask you for the white palace on the right side once you enter Al Jannah from the gate of whatever he said this is transgression you know you're being silly just ask Allah for Al Jannah and that's it because an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said once you enter Al Jannah Allah has prepared for the dwellers of paradise what no I have ever seen what no ear have ever heard of. Uh, but to be very particular, like you already have the blueprint and the roadmap of Al Jannah and you know your way around and I want to enter this palace and this home, that's called transgression. You know, you're dealing with Allah the Almighty, you should, you should rise up to the level of knowing whom you're talking to. But asking Allah to save you and to save the entire Ummah is perfectly fine. Barakallahu feek. Tasneem from the USA. Welcome to Ask with us, Sister Tasneem. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have a question on behalf of my mom. Mm -hmm. So she was diagnosed with COVID from the first of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And because of the symptoms of COVID, she wasn't able to fast for 11 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, Alhamdulillah, she has started fasting, but she has a question that normally the mist fast, you know, take precedence over the shawal fast. So she completes the mist and then also the shawal fast during the month of shawal. But in this case, in this month of Ramadan, she is feeling really weak, uh, Sheikh, and she doesn't want to let go of the reward of the shawal fast due to its reward. And so uh, she has a question if she can make up the shawal fast first and uh, because she's not sure if she'll be able to make up the missed fast uh, those 11 days. I got your question. First of all, we wish uh, that your mother will get well very soon. Asalullah al-Azim, Rabbal Ash al-Azim, ayyash fiyaha, shifa la yughadru saqama, and all Muslims who are suffering. Secondly, yes, it is permissible to begin by fasting the six white days of Shawwal. Then you can make up even if you spread it over several weeks or even several months. And this question was answered more in depth and length yesterday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zakaria from the UK, welcome to Ask Oda Zakaria. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Thank you for taking my question. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're most welcome. Go ahead. Hello? Yes. Zakaria, I hear you. Oh. I hear you. We'll give you one more chance. Zakaria, can you hear me? Okay. Try again. Let's take yeah. Haider from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Haider. Welcome, Islam Sheikh. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Welcome to Ask Uda. Jazakallah uh, for taking the call. So while you are answering the uh, prayer in Shujud, I got a quick question. So can we uh, pray uh, in any Shujud? Like if you are praying in fourth prayer uh, with Imam, and also if you are leading the prayer, can you also pray? Towards the last sujood, uh, making it a little longer as well. Okay, that's a good question. Well, uh, Haider heard my answer to Sister Fatima's question from Ireland when she says that I like to prolong my sujood and I have this uh, confusion all the time how many sajda I made. So I, I normally prolong my second sajda and I save my sujood in it so not to get confused, not to forget and I said it is permissible to prolong the first or the last. But what some Imams do when they prolong the last sajda, like if it is a farewell in every prayer, this is not proper because you make the sujood and you make the dua in every sajda. But to make the last tajda, it's exactly like, you know, the person who's making the last takbir. So he says, Allahu Akbar. Why is it different from the very first one? It should be all the same. So I should not deliberately prolong only the last tajda as if it is a farewell tajda. 
if it happens coincidentally, like I didn't remember to make dua, but in the last tajda, it's permissible. But to specifically adopt this and make it a routine in every prayer, I don't have any doubt that's an innovation. Thank you, Haider from the USA. Abdul Samad from Finland. Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Samad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Huda. How are you? I'm doing just fine, alhamdulillah. And you? Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. My question uh, to the day, I want to ask, uh, I, I don't have many religious family members. And uh, sometimes when they see me, uh, they they don't, say uh, anything like mashallah allah mabarik barakallah mm. nothing like this mm -hmm. and they say oh we, we envy you and uh, all this stuff do mm. you know mm. am i still safe from okay. the evil eye even though they didn't say mashallah or allah mabarik or nothing like that okay barakallah uh, if you yourself uh abdul samad if you yourself recite in your adhkar on a regular basis and whenever somebody is saying, oh, wow, nice watch. How did you get it, man? Oh, nice vehicle. Where did you get this truck from? You know, how much is it? And so on. So I say, bro, say, Allahumma barik. W what does it mean? Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you like something in somebody else's hand, barik, halla barakt. Halla barakt, why shouldn't you say, Allahumma barik? Why would one of you kill his brother or his sister? by simply envying them. So a sister who's having a long hair and she's sitting with a lady, wow, I've never seen any longer hair than this one. No, 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 it shouldn't be done this way. Sister say, Allahumma barik. And it is okay to say, you yourself say, mashallah, la quwata illa billah, Allahumma barik, say Allahumma barik. You know, non-Muslims do not feel shy to say, cross fingers or touch wood. Moreover, and we've said before, these practices and gestures are simply acts of shirk. Because touch wood, which wood? The wood of the cross. To do what? To protect you against the evil eye? None and nothing can protect you against the evil eye but Allah and seek a refuge in Him. So, in the Quran, If it is something yours, and you like it, then say, MashaAllah, la quwata illa billah. If it belongs to somebody else and you like it, and you fear that uh, you may give him uh, an evil eye or envy him, and deliberately, in any case, say, Allahumma barik. Oh Allah, bless him, bless his family, bless him in his Mercedes, bless him in his uh, new iPhone, bless him in whatever. You know, train yourself to wish well for others to be happy for whatever people get. And by the way, it is perfectly okay to wish for yourself similar to it. Somebody picked you up in a Range Rover. Oh my God, that's a five million bucks. Oh my God. So and you say, oh my God, and say, wow, and all of that say, mashallah, Allahumma barik, barakallahu laka fiha. Oh Allah gave me similar to it. Is saying so wrong? No, it's perfectly okay. Okay, barakallahu fiku. Khan from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Wada Khan. Thank you so much. My my question is that uh, it's first to go to Juma prayer on the masjid every Friday, but but my my parents they're they're very scared. They don't want me to go because I have asthma and the COVID. I'm from New York, so mm. COVID is hello. I hear you. I hear you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So the COVID, uh, it's it's getting a little bit. It's not it's not that under control. So is it okay if I do Juma at home because I have asthma and I can't go to the Khan, masjid? Khan, I want to ask you first of all, may Allah cure you and protect you against asthma. Second question: uh, Have you been vaccinated yet against COVID? No, no, I have not. Why not? It's available now. Almost the whole nation have been vaccinated. Well, I, I, I plan to get vaccinated soon, inshallah. Well, okay, I, so I, I made a point. For the time being, if your doctor said it is not safe for you to attend public places, 
like you don't go to school anyway. Why? Because of the COVID. Then it is okay to skip the Jumu'ah prayer or any prayer in the masjid. But guess what? If you go to school, and then you should go to the masjid to attend the Jumu'ah prayer. Because if you can afford to go to school, you're wearing the mask. By the way, Muslims in the masjid are very, very protective and following the rules and regulations, alhamdulillah. Every country I visited, mashallah. So here is the trick. If your doctor says, look, you're not allowed to mix with people, don't even go to school. And I ain't going to school, then don't go to the masjid until you get vaccinated, inshallah. But if you don't because of a legitimate reason, like the doctor advises you or he puts emphasis, don't go to the masjid, then you pray the Jumu'ah in, in your house for rak'ahs, dhuhr, prayer, not Jumu'ah. Thank you, Khan, and may Allah cure you. Mahmoud from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mahmoud, how are you? Alhamdulillah. And how are you too, Sheikh? I'm doing just fine. Thank you for asking. Alhamdulillah. Um, my question is, um, there's this dua um, class that's um, authentic by Sheikh Albani. Um, um, the dua in the hadith of um, Abu Umama that um, the Prophet um, informed Abu Umama that um, he wants to tell him a dua that um, would be better for him than him to say the azkar he was saying better than um, the whole night and the whole day. So um, the azkar is um, Subhanallah, and so on. It's a long dua, and there are various. Um, narration if you check True. the hadith the other one by Umu uh, Habiba Umu Salama may Allah be pleased with her w w so what yes, is the question I know. yes sir um, the one by the, um, the one by um, Umu Habiba and um, this particular one um, I wanted to ask can the dua be said more than once oh yes you can say one. simply yes you can say it so many times as a matter of fact, I love to repeat the dua so many times while you recite in the morning and the evening adhkar, especially if it is something that Allah loves so much. Why shouldn't I repeat it over and over? Yes, it is permissible. Thank you. Uh, Huda from Brunei. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum um, salam wa rahmatullah. Huda, how old are you? I have a question. Uh, I'm already 27 years old. <laughs> How old? I, I am 27, 27 years old. 27? I thought you were saying 27. 7. Okay. Your <laughs> sister Huda from Brunei, <laughs> no. 27. I'm sorry, yeah. I, I really mistaken uh, you with a with with child. I thought you were 7 years old. Okay. No, I don't no, know if this I'm is a good thing. I'm 27 years old. Okay. 27. Yeah, I have sister question. Huda. Go it's ahead. all about. Um, family problem. I have four siblings. I'm the second one. Uh, for my question is, uh, for my first sister is already married with a man. Is really perfect for me. It's really more Islamic. Both of them uh, is Islamic college. Uh, but for me, I feel depressed because it's too over for me. Um, I'm already cover using scarf. Uh, I'm already covered with scarf and I used to cover my body. I never show my hair through other men or her husband. But I feel, uh, but I feel right now my sister is look like very mad at me, and sometimes what I do is wrong. Um, I feel that she is feel jealous and always so hate more at me. She, mm. she always say and and right now I feel like I'm like disturbing okay are you, my living, sibling. are you living with your sister in the same house oh uh, yeah same same house oh uh, that's um, why so you need yeah. to see your brother-in-law on regular basis um my brother-in-law is in here also with my sister living in here so in in one house. Okay. 
your sister and her husband are living with you in the same house. So you get to see your brother-in-law. Yes, in my house. Uh, but different, different room. In different room. But different room. Okay. I feel, <laughs> yes. Okay. But I feel like um, my sister always uh, always get mad at me and I and, and feel uh, Let me tell you, with sister, what, Hoda, you stay... What her reaction, stay. what her reaction with me. Hold on. Um, right now, I'm... Right now, I'm... I'm already finished study from university. Mm -hmm. uh, just waiting for the graduation. Okay. Yeah, um, my sibling already, uh, all my sibling already get job, get already get work, and right now I'm still, I'm still waiting for, for working. For. Okay, I got your question, Huda. Thank you so much. May Allah make it easy for you and you graduate with success and uh, and also you find a, a, a lawful and a decent uh, job. But your sister is not blameworthy. I don't blame her. And your brother-in-law, yani your brother-in-law is the one who's married to your sister and was living with you in the same house. He's not your mahram. So every time you meet him, you're wearing hijab. If you're dining together or sitting together, you're wearing hijab. And you don't chat with him freely like he's like he's your body or you know, we're cool together and he's my brother because he's just your brother in law. And it would be super nice when you speak to your sister honestly and say, uh, my dear sister, sis, tell me how would you like me to deal with your husband? I will do it. Okay? And if this is because you guys are living in the same house, so that can be very problematic. So limit your interaction with your brother-in-law to the minimum whenever it is necessary. Thank you, Huda from Brunei. Assalamu alaikum. Marina from Sri Lanka. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Salam. I can I know like in Sri Lanka we like a lot of people they recite the Quran and gift it to the dead. Mm. Is it correct or can we ask only dua? Thank you, Marina from Sri Lanka. Well, there are two different opinions. I am of the opinion which says that we follow exactly what the Prophet ﷺ did in this regard. So I read Quran as much as I can, as much as I want, then I pray for my father after I finish my recitation of Quran. But if I want to give him something directly, so I give any charity and I say, Oh Allah, this is on behalf of my late father. Uh, give iftar for the fasting people. I say, Oh Allah, give the reward to my, inshallah, going to perform umrah. And inshallah, hajj and say, Oh Allah, give the reward to my late father. Make dua in sujood and I ask Allah the Almighty to bless my late father. All of that is permissible. When it comes to the Quran and the prayers, we don't have a solid reference. It is worth of mentioning because in Sri Lanka, most of people are Shafi'is, okay? And according to the school of thought, it is permissible to recite Quran and give their word to whomever you want to. So I'm not dismissing this opinion, but I like to be in the safe side, and this is the, most, the more correct view. To recite Quran for your own self, then after you finish, you pray for whomever you want. Thank you, Marina from Sri Lanka. Fatima from India. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Laru Fatima, how are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. How are you? I'm doing just fine. And hearing your voice makes me very happy. It makes my day. So how many para of the Quran have you finished so far in Ramadan? I'm... Doing 28, but tonight hopefully so I finish 28. Allahu Akbar, Masha Allah, Masha Allah, Allah, congratulations, Masha Allah. So that means you've been doing Masha Allah two paras every day, and Sha Allah you'll finish the Ramadan, you'll finish the Quran hopefully today or tomorrow. Congratulations, Ya Fatima, Masha Allah. So, what is your question today? So I have two questions. The first question is, is it an authentic hadith to recite the most 
in last week of every forest fire during a pandemic or crisis or oppression and my second question is my yeah, mother yeah, was advising Fatima. both of Fa us Fatima. that um yes peter i can barely understand your question can you keep the phone a little away from your mouth okay maybe it will reduce the static so i can better understand you you said in the fard namaz what is the question about fard namaz okay so my question is uh, is it an authentic hadith to recite kunut in last rakah of every fard prayer during a time of crisis or oppression good question very good question and the answer is yes that's a sound hadith next question my second question is uh my mother was telling me and my sister that if we pray and if we fast inshallah allah will grant us jannah mm. my question is do we uh pray and worship allah in jannah like does it stop or because it's a privilege to pray allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a muslim so why does it stop in jannah if it does thank you fatima that's a beautiful question and before we take a short break let me tell you that this is a very valid question in the home of this worldly life we are asked and commanded by allah to work and then in the home of the year after there will be only reward and no work that's why we don't have to go to work to earn our living or worry about eating or drinking or going to school or buying clothes whatever you wish in paradise is yours and you don't have to do any act of worship other than thanking Allah okay Fatima may the Almighty Allah make it easy for all of us to enter paradise safely Allahumma Ameen she also asked in the first question, maybe some of the viewers didn't uh, catch the question, uh, about making qunut, which is supplicating in the last rak'ah of every father prayer during crisis. And that's an authentic hadith. And by the way, the whole ummah should be in doing so in every father prayer, including Zuhra and Asr, because of the crisis the whole world is experiencing, the pandemic, COVID. You have seen the next wave and the new variants uh, is, is really destroying many countries and is sweeping all over the world. So it is prescribed in every prayer, the last rak'ah after rising up from Mukur, to raise your hand and you invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove this calamity and to protect us against that. It's time to take a short break. And insha'Allah, we'll be back in a little bit. Enjoy listening to another beautiful recitation from one of our junior reciters during the break. Stay tuned. Ramadan Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. I hope you're all enjoying your fasting and I hope you've either finished uh, the Quran once or close to finishing today inshallah. So this way you get to finish the Quran twice in the blessed month of Ramadan. Uh, our phone numbers again will appear on the bottom of the screen for the reminder. And we have Brother Ali from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as Dr. Salah, how are you, sir? Welcome to Ask Uda Ali, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing very well. Dr. Salah, I had uh, two questions today. Mm -hmm. The first one is, if a person engages in an act which nullifies his fast, and he has to make kofara for it, can he choose between fasting for 60 consecutive days, because that's a lot of days, or if he's wealthy, can he just feed 60 people? Does he have a choice? No, 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 wait a minute, Ali, because the kafara that you refer to is in case that the fasting person during the daytime of Ramadan deliberately indulge into sexual activities. Okay? Okay. But if somebody was traveling, if somebody was sick and they skipped fasting, 
is called fidya, which is simply to feed one miskin if he or she cannot fast. But if the situation is temporary and eventually they will recover, they will come back and they will be able to fast, then there is neither fidya nor kafara. They should rather make up that day as the Almighty Allah said, فَفِدْيَةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ So you make up the same number of days but after Ramadan. The huge ransom and expiation that you're talking about, fasting for two consecutive months, if a man and a woman who are Muslims and fasting, and during the daytime they have sexual relations. So they've committed a major sin and they must stop immediately, and they must resume fasting. Then after Ramadan, they start fasting for two consecutive months. Each one of them, of course, if both of them have done so knowingly and deliberately. Okay, Ali, what is your second question? And the second question that I had was, uh, I saw another video about yours, uh, about making up for the missed fast. You said similarly for making up missed salah, a person has to go back and, you know, um, uh, pay the same amount of years that they have missed the Salah for, mm -hmm. given that they were on and off making some Salah, going to Juma and making that Salah. It, mm -hmm. That's an old video that I saw. True. So that's also true. And thank you for the first part clarifying that there is no Kupara, uh, you know, for just generally missing a fast. Okay. Barakallahu feek, uh, Ali. And uh, it is true. That is somebody who was on and off in praying and in fasting and they repented. Well, you owe some ibadat and you still have to make them up. It's for your own benefit. Assalamu alaikum. Rayyan from the USA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, Rayyan. Welcome to Ask Huda. Okay, thank you, Sheikh. Um, so I have two questions. So first off, I am someone who is diagnosed with um, OCD, and I have two questions. The first one is about uh, a NIA, which is the, the intention which I have about in, uh, before doing acts of worship like wudu, prayer, or even uh, or even also the history especially. Mm -hmm. And then my second, and then yeah, doubts uh, in intention. And then my second question is. How can one uh, make wudu or ghusl in a, in a short amount of time without wasting so much water? Because I tend to take too long when it comes to doing, doing uh, things to get rid of ritual purity. Thank so. you. Rayyan, may Allah cure yeah. you and make you overcome the OCD. Uh, secondly, the niyyah is, is a very simple thing because you don't have to write it down. You don't have to document it by saying it or uttering it. As yesterday, somebody said, I woke up for suhoor, but I forgot to say the niyyah, and I, after adhan, I'm not sure whether I said it or not. He said, you woke up for suhoor? Yes, that is the niyyah. Why would somebody wake up at 3 a.m. to eat? Why? Uh, well, because tomorrow we're fasting, and it's a sahur meal. That is the niyyah, brothers and sisters. القلب. I have formulated the intention by waking up to eat a suhoor meal. Sometimes I'm too tired. My wife says, you know, you got to eat something for, you know, suhoor. I say, I can at least drink a sip of water because even a sip of water with the intention of suhoor, it counts. Why am I doing this during this time? Why am I rushing to take my medication before Fajr? Because I'm planning to fast. That's called the niyyah. So when you go to the shower place to make wudu, why? Because Zuhr time, I want to pray. Well, you don't need to formulate the intention by saying it. That's the intention. Forget about it. Alhamdulillah. Ghusl. It's Friday. Let me take a shower. That is the niyyah. A couple uh, Muslims having to have intimate relationship. And it's prayer time, so they have to perform ghusl to lift the measure of impurity. What do we say? You say nothing. You just say Bismillah in the beginning and start washing. How to make wudu and ghusl in, in, a, in a short time without wasting too much time and water. Learn from the Prophet Sallallahu You know what? Um, a couple months ago in the USA, particularly in Texas, for 14 days there was power outage. So there was no water, no electricity. 
What were we using? A bottle of water was sufficient to make wudu multiple times. And there is a video I have uh, made wudu with a quarter of a 60 milliliter bottle. A quarter of that much. Yeah? So 15 milliliter of water was enough for, I just made a hole in the cap and I started making wudu. This is sufficient, alhamdulillah. When you have the leisure time and when you have plenty of uh, water and you want to dip yourself in, in the pool or in the bathtub, that's something different. But to get the ghusl done, Bismillah, you wash your hands, then you wash your private, then you make wudu. Then you wash your right side. Make sure the water goes through your hair and your beard and course your fingers and toes. Then the left side. And one more time you pour the water all over your body and good luck. You have ghusl and wudu simultaneously. Assalamu alaikum. Dunyata from Kosovo. Assalamu alaikum Dunyata. Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. Go ahead, Dunyata. Uh, Sheikh, I wanted to ask you a question about riba, if I may. I'm listening. So, I wanted to ask you a question about riba, if I may. Yes, okay. please go ahead, I'm listening. So, a few years ago, about six years now, Sheikh, my father made me sign up and get a few letters to the notary for Riba. Okay. I was not engaged, engaged or married at that time. So a few years went by now, and together with my father, we are diagnosed with a kind of illness from a psychiatry. Mm. So every day I use medication so that I can eat food, otherwise I cannot eat. How can I cleanse myself? So, Sheikh, I wanted to ask you, how can I cleanse myself from, from this sin? I make tawbah every day from this sin. I also ask my father how much money are the best so that me and my, fa my fiancé turn back that money to the person who my father gave the money to. Mm. But my father does not tell me the truth. So you what, signed, what shall I do, so, so Dunyata, you signed on something that you have no clue about. And now when you're asking your, hus your father to tell you the balance so that you can settle it along with your fiancé, he's not revealing that to you, that's very vague. Number one, you're not blameworthy because you trusted your father so much. All the blame is on him. All the blame is on him. And it's very unfortunate. I mean, it's like, oh, cool, thank God, alhamdulillah, I'm not blameworthy, it's my father. No, I feel bad for him as well. So, yes, I appreciate you and your fiancé are trying to chip in to settle the debt so that you will be interest-free and debt-free, not you, your father, okay? So take it easy with him, or at least contact the person whom your father owes whatever, okay? Or try in a way or another to put your hand and get hold of the document to know what did you sign on, okay? But you're not blameworthy because you did not intentionally do that. Dunyata, may Allah bless you and your family. I mean, normally we advise people not to trust anyone when you sign or anything, you gotta verify it, you gotta make sure it's authentic and it's nothing is against you. But never uh, the father you know, but to that extent, yes, everyone should really read through and between the lines before you ever sign in any document. Assalamu alaikum. Kamil from the case. A, hey, welcome to Ask Wada. Assalamu alaikum, doctor. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, uh, Kamil. Okay, doctor. Uh, how are you? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Uh, and uh, that, uh, that uh, I have uh, one question. Mm. What is the ruling of a Muslim who live in non-Muslim country in plural societies who in the food servicing either a cook, waitress, or catcher during the, the time of Ramadan? 
Okay, what is the question exactly, uh, Kamal? Somebody who's living in a non-Muslim country during Ramadan, what is the question? Uh, uh, he, he works in uh, food servicing uh, during the time of Ramadan. He's working where? Uh, in the food servicing food? industry during the time of Ramadan, whether as a cook, waitress, or cashier. So he, in the restaurant. is he like a cook in a restaurant? Yes. Uh, a cook, a waitress, a cashier in the restaurant during, during the day time of Ramadan. Okay. I got your question. But I want to ask you, Kamil, how are you viewing Huda TV? Are you viewing it on social media or on the satellite, on television? Uh, sorry, I view in the Facebook. Facebook. Also, I'd like to bring yeah. to your attention, my dear respected viewers, were uh, on Arab Sat as well. The frequency and all the details, inshallah, I'm going to request the director to post it on the screen right now. Beautiful. And the, um, the broadcast is very clear, crystal clear, mashallah. So here is the downlink frequency, and there is a symbol rate. And the satellite is uh, Suhail Sat or Arab Sat, okay? So I would appreciate if you can uh, fetch the channel so that you don't have to worry about watching it uh, online. You can watch it on the screen. The entire Middle East in Africa, you can watch it on the Arab Sat, and this is the frequency. We're still on Intel Sat, though, which covers the Indian subcontinent and great portions of uh, Europe. And we're also on Nigerian satellite. And I, if I can kindly request all the viewers in the African countries, Nigeria, Niger, and the neighboring countries who happen to view Huda TV on the Nigerian satellite, I would appreciate if you can send me a message, tell me how is the uh, broadcast and whether it's clear or interrupted. I would appreciate that. Bent Asif from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Ahlan wa sahlan, bint Asif. Welcome to Ask Wada. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, uh, may I ask three questions? Yes, or is it, uh, uh, Okay. My first question is uh, that uh, I'd like to know if Qadriya are also known as Mu'tazila and Jabriya uh, is another name for... Uh, uh, Murjia, I'd like to confirm this, and then the second question I, I would I'd, li I'd like to ask on my husband's behalf. Uh, he uh, he'd like to open up a YouTube channel uh, based on the science of engineering, and he intends to uh, derive an income from it as well. But he wants to know if the income would be halal in itself because uh, then you have to work with AdSense. And then the ads which uh, show up on the channel are obviously having music and other stuff like that. So mm. he'd like to know if his income would be halal or not. And uh, the, the third question is that uh, I take a, key, a basic level, a beginner's level Akida classes for sisters. So I'd like to know if I can recite any other thing than Khutbah al Haja, if there are any alternatives for that to be recited in the very beginning. About Khutbah yeah. al-Hajjah in, in, in what circumstances? Uh, if I'd like to uh, offer some basic Akida classes to sisters only. Mm -hmm. So do I have to recite Khutbah al-Hajjah in the beginning or are, are there any other alternatives for me to recite as a teacher or a lecturer? Okay. First of all, Brother Kamil from the KSA, if you're Muslim, you're not supposed and you're not allowed to sell food to those who would eat it during the daytime of Ramadan, even if they are non-Muslims. Secondly, uh, Sister Bint Asiya from Pakistan. The Mu'tazila, yes, they adopt the Qadari belief. Khutbatul Haja uh, is recommended. But it is not necessary to say it in, in the beginning of every speech. So if you say, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, then, Wassalatu Wassalamu Ala Rasulillah, we'll do it. Okay? Especially when the class, you have very limited time, or 
uh, you want to alternate so that not every class, not every khutbah you say khutbah al haja Barakallahu fiki bint as from uh, Pakistan. Arika from the UK. Arika, assalamu alaikum, Arika. Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Oda. Erica, can you hear me? One more time. Erica, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think we're ready to wrap it up. Let's take the final call for the day Tamar from the USA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Wada Akhi. Th uh, thank you, Sheikh. I had a question about uh, breaking the fast while traveling. Um, so I want to travel to my parents' house. Um, they live in a different time zone than me. Mm. So they have different Fajr and different Maghrib timings. Uh, so my question is, if I travel to them and I arrive on the same day, do I break my fast at Maghrib their time or Maghrib Got your uh, question. the time where? Got your question, Tamar. Do you have another one? No, that's my only question. Great. Let me give you an example that I, I do when I travel from the Middle East and we are six to seven hours before North America. So when I travel to the Middle East, <clears throat> if I'm from the Middle East to New York, I end up fasting six more hours because the USA is behind, six hours behind, in New York, seven hours in Texas. Why do I have to do that? Why don't I just calculate how many hours I normally fast? 15 hours, bismillah, you are in the plane, eat and drink, even the sun is still up. That's not permissible. Because the Quran says, وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبِيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْعُ ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ 187, chapter number 2. So it doesn't matter where you are. What matters is dawn and sunset. Exactly like the case of, well, I began Ramadan in the USA, but going to Pakistan, they're one or two days behind, or the Eid one, two days before. You celebrate Eid with the people whom you are with right now. So what matters is the location, the locality in which you are. So when you go to visit your parents, you break your fast with them, even if you fasted before or after them. Barakallahu feekum, brothers and sisters. By that, we've come to the end of today's edition of uh, Ask Uda. I want to share with the viewers, especially from North America, over the weekend, Saturdays and Sundays, inshallah, we will be live, Ask Uda live. That means we'll have live twice a day. Live for Ask Uda, which will be 12 a.m. Cairo time, 11 p.m. same day uh, UK time GM, uh, uh, GMT and it will be uh, Eastern time 6 p.m. Central time in the USA uh, 5 p.m. just to make it easy for the viewers who don't have a chance to catch up with us and in soon inshallah will be subscribing to the Galaxy satellite in North America so you will be able to watch us live on the screen at the convenience of your homes, pray for us. May Allah accept from all of us. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.